To order, please. Mr. Clerk, if you'll please call the roll. Alderman Simpson. Still here. <laughs> Terzinski. Here. Verbig. Still here. Gallagher. Here. Naylor. Here. Baker. Yes. Thomas. Still here. Mayor Pulse. Yes, I'm here. All present. Not just for that. Mr. Simpson. Well, I don't have a year, um, strangely enough. Um, the last time we went through this budget thing, everything was not on the table. I do agree with Mr. Gallagher. We can't cut our way out of this. We can't cut our way out of this. That doesn't mean more cuts should or could not be made. If our municipal ban were a car, it would be a Cadillac. Maybe this town can no longer afford a luxury car in the form of a municipal ban when last year we cut social service organizations. <clears throat> so again, I agree we can't cut our way out of this. Last year, everything was not on the table. So when you use that phrase, everything on the table, please put everything on the table this time. Thank you, Mr. Baker. Others? Mr. Simpson. I'm just doing this because, once again, I don't have any time. Uh, there's a quote out there, I believe it's from Shakespeare. I'm paraphrasing, of course. The first thing we do is kill all the lawyers. If you read further into that quote, what they're trying to do is suggest if we get, a ri get rid of the lawyers, then we can do whatever we want and all hell will break loose. Not having your own lawyer, to some degree, to me, is simply asking for trouble. And because I basically don't trust lawyers, why would you trust some firm out there who's trying to get our business and make their money to come in here and tell us what we really need to know when they have a vested interest up front in getting our business? Now again, however this comes down, I understand is in your hands. And I'm not saying we keep the whole thing in house. That's not what I'm saying. Let's be clear. If you get rid of all your lawyers and you don't have a lawyer of your own, I think that's a mistake. And think of it this way, for those of you who have a plumber you trust or a roofer you trust and, or an accountant you trust, somebody that you can always turn to regarding certain matters because it's not unusual for a counselor like ours, as intelligent and experienced as you are, to not know S from Shinola about what the law really means. So not having your own lawyer, to some degree, is asking for trouble. Other comments? Really like that, Mr. Simpson? Let's please, if we can keep it brief. Let's not turn this into another, from my opinion, veiled attack at the staff. Thank guess, you. No, no, I'm sorry. Thank you. Please, Mr. Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, now I finally see what it means conflict of interest from the inside as though the staff attorney becomes the attorney of the city staff as opposed to the attorney of the council. So I think this is another veiled attack at that. First of all, and also Mr. Gallagher, the raw numbers about who does what, who splits what, that really doesn't tell me anything. It just tell me, tells me the numbers of cities who do a thing in a given way. Do we have any real information from anybody who's at these cities, how that relationship has morphed over time? So to me, the raw numbers mean absolutely nothing because it doesn't tell us anything. Some of those people could be like, really like pissed off and wish they could get out of the relationship they're in. Or they may be pleased as punch, so I don't know. So that doesn't tell me anything. And finally, I respect Pamela, but please, this is not about the occasional errors that show up in documents. Unless they have somebody like you on their staff and your talents and your fierceness are like hen's teeth out there. Unless they have you, if you think this law firm is going to come in here with perfect documentation, especially when they have the ability to charge again for the thing they've done, I don't believe it because people with your abilities are not out there. I'm saying we shouldn't pay them well, I, again, I, yeah. but that's nitpicking. I just take one more. Please, Pam. I don't want to nitpick this. I think that the city deserves to look at the proposal for version one 
Um, I'm not disregarding what you say, Dave, but I think that if, if you wanted to go around and collect agreements from various cities and read them, you would see what's involved. But I, can't, I don't think we can just say, what can you do for us? I think we need to tell them what we want them to do for us. So that's, I, I think we're going to arrive at the same end conclusion. Okay, Mr. Simpson. I too would like to echo the mayor's sentiment. I believe the city council of DeKalb will be in good hands, both with the combination of the newly elected and the incumbent. However, I feel the need to provide a little clarity and ask for an apology. When last we were here, we were chastised as a council because of practices alleged to occur during the election. And I assume that chastisement was directed at those of us who were actually running. It was said that honesty needed to be a hallmark and ethics needed to be a hallmark of our electoral campaigns. And I agree with that. But I don't think it was completely honest in the other direction. In fact, there's a gentleman here tonight who wrote a letter supporting my opponent and suggesting that one of the reasons or two of the reasons you shouldn't vote for me was because A, this council had voted to raise property taxes, which is not true, and two, that the council voted against, voted to lower social service funding. I believe the record will show that when the vote was taken that night, except for Councilman Naylor's routine recusing himself because of his wife's position, I was the only one on the council who voted no. So again, I would like an apology for suggesting that I voted against social service funding. Now, oh, no, I'm not done. <laughs> I'm not done. I don't only have this bully pulpit so many more times. I promise you, however, next week will be much smoother and much more humorous. Uh, also, one of the things that was said in the campaign was the illusion that students were somehow underrepresented. Well, I resent the implication that only students can represent students. You know, whether you're Greek or non-Greek, whether you're native student or whether you're a transfer, whether you're ROTC or whether you're fine arts, whether you're an older returning adult or a new freshman out on his own, really, only students can represent students? Is that what we've come to? If that were the case, why would the citizens of DeKalb at some point in time in the past change their voting structure to make sure students could vote? You know, if the people who did that only thought students could could represent students, why would they have let you into the process? They wanted to make the process more inclusive. Now, when it comes to my bona fides about serving the interests of students in this town, I will stack my record against anyone you find above ground. When the Sigma Chi's had someone killed during their orientation of new students, I had the authority to shut Sigma Chi down. Somebody died. But instead of doing that, I worked with that organization to keep them up and functioning. When I was the ombudsman, the vice president of student affairs asked me to spend my personal time to help her reorganize the skulls. I spent my personal time reorganizing that fraternity. Later, when I worked in student affairs, and one of the skulls got lavaliered in front, and lava, by lavaliered, I mean taped to a tree and having excrement and urine poured on him by his fraternity brothers, but that took place taped to a tree that was on the Alpha Phi property, and judicial wanted to come down on the Alpha Phi's, I, who was in charge of student group conduct at the time, prevented that from happening. When an SA president was impeached, fully impeached, I was the one that took his keys from him to keep him from going back to the office to do God knows what. And later on, when I worked in student affairs, when the SA president and his executive director got the bright idea of raffling off a computer purchased with student funds, which by the way is illegal under state law, I was the one that saved them from themselves. So I will gladly step over and I do believe that the council will be in good hands, both new people and returning people. But I resent the implication that only a student can adequately represent the interests of students. Thank you. Mr. Terzak.